Today on Your Money, Your Wealth Podcast number 474, Jimmy in Wisconsin will have a pension, Social Security, and a seven-year retirement shortfall. How should he cover it? Skipper in Texas has some unusual pension options, which makes the most sense for his retirement needs. Should Mike and Carol in Virginia wait to do Roth conversions if they'll be in a lower tax bracket in retirement? Where should Duncan in Texas invest in the 10 years before he retires early? Would it be stupid for Jay-Z in Minnesota to miss out on free Roth opportunities? Can Ben in San Francisco's friend use the rule of 55 on a rollover retirement plan? And finally, why MYW is fun but of limited value, according to one recent review. I'm producer Andy Last, and here are the hosts of Your Money, Your Wealth, Joe Anderson CFP and Big Al Clopine CPA. We got Jimmy from Wisconsin. Remember Jimmy from Wisconsin, Big yeah, Al? Yes, isn't that your cousin? Yeah, this is not my cousin. This is another one, huh? Okay. Yeah. This is nowhere near my cousin. <laughs> okay. I got a spitball for Joan Al. First, I would like to thank you for his advice. From several years ago, he suggested to someone, go on Roth all the time. Do you remember that? That sounds like you. Yeah. Sounds like what you would say. And that's what I live by. <laughs> I remember Joe saying, you won't miss the taxes today, and you'll be so much happier in the future. From that time, I've contributed everything to my Roth 401k, done several plan conversions from traditional 401k to the Roth 401k and max out backdoor Roths. Even though I've been in very high tax brackets, 32 and 35 percent, I did not miss the taxes on those Roth contributions or conversions. And I'm thrilled that a Roth account is our largest account. Wow. Cool. 3.2 million total. He's got 1.2 of that in Roth IRA. So when you see that balance, Al, you're, you, you forget about all the taxes that you paid years ago. Yeah, because it's it's a good balance, right? You're you're taking a lot. I mean, you you're, you're probably would have spent it anyway, right? So, what I think people don't you, you can get into all the calculations, and of course you should do that. But if you want to take the uncertainty of taxes off the table, go Roth, <laughs> because a... you'll never ever pay taxes on those dollars again. Your spouse won't pay taxes. Your kids won't pay taxes. The grandkids, whatever. So if I'm looking at building a diversified portfolio, most people will take the tax deduction today. And then it grows tax deferred. And when you pull the money out, it's going to be taxed at ordinary income rates. Where do you think tax rates are going to go? Are they going to go down? Are they going to stay the same? Are they going to go up? Well, I don't know. If I'm a betting man, which I'm not, I believe that tax rates are going to go up. And most people believe that too. And so if I believe that, doesn't it make sense to pay a little bit of tax today and have all of that money grow tax-free. So on a contribution, it's like, should I go pre-tax or after-tax? I'll, I'll go after-tax. I'm in a, a decent, a fairly high tax bracket, and I go Roth 100% of my contribution. Yeah, so you practice what you preach. Like it. I do. Because I like to take a look at that balance and say, you know what? I'm never paying tax on that. It's it's done. This is all mine. It is all mine. Yeah. When you look at a retirement account, IRA, 401k, that's pre-tax, it's like, all right, well, you got this a partner. is not all mine. I got a partner. And that and in your, the IRS. In your case, IRS and California Franchise Tax Board. That's right. I'm moving, though. You're, are you to yeah. Texas? I don't know. <laughs> Florida. We'll see. Not Florida. I live there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So he'd like to spend $165,000 a year. On $3.2 million, 4% of that is $128 means he's going to be short about $37,000. Until I collect Social Security. I'm, so he's going to wait till 69 The wife is 67 so they're going to have around seventy five thousand dollars in Social Security. That's going to cover the thirty seven percent shortfall plus future inflation when we begin collecting our benefits in seven years. Why do you think he picked sixty nine and sixty seven versus just pushing it out to seventy? I don't know, but I pushed to seventy in this case. I would too. So here's his question. So on that thirty seven percent shortfall, he's got a pension now. Yeah, there's no cola. And he's looking at two options. He's got a 10-year period certain equals, let's call it $50,000. 10-year period certain, 49428 Right. So that's going to cover his shortfall, 37000 right, yeah. for the next seven years. Or if he pushes his Social Security out to age 70, it's going to cover that shortfall and some. That's right. All right. The second is that he's got 100% joint with survivors. So the difference between the two. 10-year period certain is that he will receive this 49428 for 10 years. So if he dies two years in, he's the, the heirs will still get 
428. Right. After 10 years, year 11, it's zero. Yeah, but the first 10 years are guaranteed regardless. Even if husband and wife die, goes Go to, to beneficiaries. Yep. So joint in Survivor will be, all right, so you're married, you have a spouse. So it's going to continue to pay on both lives. So if one spouse dies, this money is going to continue to pay until the second spouse dies. Right. So if they both die tragically the next year, well, then it's done. If they live until 120, it's going to pay out until 120. Correct. So he's going to receive 18400 for life. This means he would have to take more than his 4% out of the portfolio for seven years. So the math he has to do is what makes more sense. So I take 50000 for the next 10 years sure. and then call it good. Or do I want 20000 for, for the rest for of life. my life? Right. So there's a real simple way to calculate this, or you can get a little bit more advanced. Why don't you do the simple one? <laughs> Actually, I'm doing net present value. I already did it. Oh, you are? Yeah. Well, here's the simple one. Okay, you do the simple. So you got $50,000, 10 years. It's 500000 Right. You got $20,000. He's 60 years old. Yeah, call it 30 years. <laughs> right. 60, 70, 80, 90. All right, so 90. So yeah. that's 600000 Right. You take the net present value, depending on the discount rate, I think the 10 years is going to kill it. Of course it does. Yeah, so net present value, what that means is you, you take your payment, you do it over 10 years, you pick your discount rate. I just did 6%, okay? So net present value of the of the 10-year sum certain is 364 k And the other one, over 30 years is 253,000. So not only is it better to take the 10 year, but it's going to feel better because you're not going into into your portfolio. I would take that in this case every single time. Yeah, the math <clears throat> there's no way that I don't know how old you have to <laughs> Well, when I when I went from 25 to 30 years it almost did nothing. So I, we could add another 30 years it still wouldn't pan out. Yeah, the 10 year no brainer. Yeah. I think his his numbers are wrong. To be honest, it, with it you. could be because usually these are a lot closer. They're almost identical when you do a net present value. Right. So what Nalan's doing is taking a look at the the cash flows of that payment and just taking it back to say how big of a nest egg do I need today, given a certain rate of return that would equal out. So one is going to be ten years, one is going to be for life. The eighteen thousand, if you take the net present value of those future cash flows, is two hundred thousand versus three fifty. Yeah, so, exactly. So another way to say this is what is the value in today's dollars, yeah. right? And the 10 years better. Wait, I'm by a and, long shot. And the reason is because if you get a payment in 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, it's worth way less than today because if you had it today, you could have 10 years of interest and growth or 20 years or 30 years of growth. So that's where this net present value comes into play. So Jimmy, you got your answer. Congratulations on a wonderful well job done go roth all roth <laughs> and, and push social security to 70 yep here's one from texas goes andy and the boys i have a question an apology for you today my first or first is the apology i've been listening to the podcast for less than a year and had worked my way through all of the ymyw catalog before asking my first question yeah, well, that's not a – you don't have to listen to the last three years to ask a question. Okay, right. <laughs> On the off chance, we might have answered it. Got it. I unknowingly – Commandeered. Commandeered, I was going to say that. I just had something in my throat. <laughs> Someone else's alias when asking my question. Mia culpa. That means, oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> something like that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> to avoid any confusion, if not taken already, you can call me Skipper. I'm a husky old guy in comfortable clothes. I'll reserve Ginger for my lovely wife and Thurston for my father-in-law. My question, he's got a pension from his former employer that came with a generous two-to-one match. The account balance will continue to grow at a guaranteed 7% rate until I start taking withdrawals. When I start taking withdrawals, I can take a monthly payment based on the full balance or I can pull some money out and then take a monthly payment on the remaining balance. I'm eligible to start receiving the payments right now, but I don't need the money, so I'm letting it grow. However, if I die before I start taking withdrawals or before the monthly payments dip into the company money, my heirs will only get my contributions and none of the company matching funds. For my heirs and for myself, I would like to I would love to get as much of the company money as possible while maximizing the return. As I see it, 
he's got some options. All right. So if I understand this, he's got an old pension. Right. He put in some dollars. The company matched two to one. Right. And so once he starts taking the payments of this pension, if he dies prior to whatever, he can the, the heirs are not going to receive any money. Right. And we just talked about pension payments in an earlier question. So it could be a 10-year period certain. It could be joint with life. It could be survivor. I mean, there's all sorts of things. Sure. Five-year period certain and so on. So it sounds like this pension is that, hey, we're, we'll pay you a certain payment for your life. But after you pass... If there's contributions left over of your money, we'll give that to the heirs. However, if it's our money, we're ceasing the payments. Right. Contributions only, not the rest. So it's not it's not really like a 401k, which is your own money. Well, it's a pension. Right. Yeah. Well, it's a match or a pension. It's like probably, well, they're, they're matching two to one. So they're just based in this on a pool of money and, and life expectancy of that pool for them to give a two to one match. Yeah, I understand. I I haven't seen too many pensions like this. Never have you? Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. So that, that's why I'm saying for our listeners, this is not kind of like a typical thing. Yeah, it's not very common. All right. So he's got some options here. So he's trying to think through this and figuring it out. So he's like, if I go for the long term growth and then only start taking withdrawals after retiring. So he's going to max this thing out. He's going to get it as big as he can. And then he's going to take the payments when he retires. Sure. Or he can start taking the payments now based on the full balance, full payment, accept the tax implications and reinvest all the proceeds. Pull out some of my contributions now. Start taking payments based on the two-third balance. Accept the large tax implications. Reinvest all the proceeds. All right. Okay. No. If I start taking payments on the full balance, it takes 44 months to burn through my contributions and start dipping into the company's matching funds. I wonder, <clears throat> so if, if the company matching funds, did, did those deplete? Yeah, I'm guessing the way he writes it, the contributions come out first, maybe. And then the company match comes out second. Yeah, but if that were true, there'd be no taxation because it's your own money. So I, it, it seems strange to me. Right. Okay. Or maybe it's a blended, right? Maybe maybe it's pro rata. Pro rata. Maybe it's I, I don't know. But if it's pre-tax, he got a tax deduction. Right. So then if he's getting his contributions back out, it'd still be taxable. Well, yeah, actually you're right. I mean I was thinking about that wrong. Yeah, it'd still be taxable. Yeah. You're a CPA, right? <laughs> Can I see your license? <laughs> it's expired. <laughs> no. Just kidding. Uh, okay. If I take full payments, it's three and a half years. No, two. My father and both grandfather died at 62 and 63. I'm 58 and a half. So timing is a very real issue for me. Okay. Yeah, boy. Wait, do you think he's constantly thinking about that? Well, he's, he, he wants to take care of his family. I applaud him for that, but he knows. 58. So is it like he's counting down the days? Well, <laughs> I mean, my dad died at 61. I'm like, oh my God. I wonder what I'm going to be like when I'm 58. Yeah. I'm going to be, oh, man. You're going to be <laughs> got three all, years all left. kinds of life insurance. <laughs> got three years left? <laughs> it sucks. Uh, so they all live pretty hard lives. Yeah, my old man lived a pretty hard life. Yeah. Okay. I have not. What do you think a definition of a hard life is? Is that like working on the railroad, working in the coal mine? It could be. Or it could be a lot of drinking, smoking. Oh, that's not hard. <laughs> Depends what you're drinking. Yeah, that makes life fun. True. Not hard. All right. But he is not. But this still weighs heavily. I'm comfortable discussing death, but realize others are not. Include if you see fit. No, it's, it's fitting just like a glove. <laughs> well, I mean, when you're talking about retirement, that has to be a component, right? Relevant information. Ginger and I have comfortable taxable income, approximately one hundred ten thousand. Live on approximately seventy thousand dollars per year. No debt. He's got one point five million dollars roughly in retirement accounts. Drink of choice: whiskey and coke. Love the show. I tell everyone about it. Keep up the good work. All right. Thanks, Skipper from Texas. So he's got one point five million. He's thinking, what should I do here with this payment? Should I start taking it now? Should I push it off? Do I take two thirds? I personally would would start taking some now. I don't know if I do it all, 
but I'd at least do a pretty good check to get the process started is, is based upon what we understand about your pension plan, which isn't very much. But if that's truly the way it goes, you got to get all your contributions out to get your employer matched, then I'd, I'd start doing it now, especially with your family history. Now, hopefully, Skipper, you'll live to 90 and, and it's a moot point, but you know, you're concerned about your family and I think that's the right thing to do. Start taking, yeah, I think so too. I would do that. Start taking payments now based on the full balance. I, I would worry less about taxes and, and plus your income is great, 110000 but you're in a low enough tax bracket. I mean, the 24% bracket goes to, for a married couple, almost 400000 So, and you're in Texas, right? So it's going to be 24% or lower, probably lower, probably 22%. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Spitball your own retirement with a free calculator at easyretirement.com. That's E-A-S-I retirement.com. Take two minutes, create a login, enter your income, savings, and expenses, and find out if you're on track. Tweak your spending or savings and see in an instant how it changes your entire retirement future. Switch between optimistic, average, or pessimistic assumptions for inflation and returns. Test different budgeting scenarios and withdrawal strategies. E-A-S-I stands for education, assessment, strategy, implementation. You need all four to create a successful retirement plan and the free retirement calculator at easyretirement.com can help. Then you take the next step. Schedule a one-on-one -on -one with a live human financial professional from right there in the calculator to review your results and create even more sophisticated strategies to meet your retirement needs. Start calculating your retirement wellness now for free at easyretirement.com. That's E-A-S-I retirement.com. Mike Carroll from Falls Church, Virginia. Hi, Joe, Big Al, Andy. Please refer us to Mike and Carroll. Brady Bunch. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is this the theme this week, Andy? Not intentionally. Are you sure? I'm positive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the previous person that said that he had used somebody else's name, that was because he was using Jack and Diane previously. So oh, this time yeah. he's Skipper and Ginger. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I've been listening to your podcast for about three years. Love the show. I drive a 2017 Toyota Tacoma. Wife drives 2016 Honda Civic. I'm mostly a beer drinker. I like almost anything from Germany or Czech Republic. Wife enjoys a dry cedar from time to time. Or cider. When I say cedar? Yeah. What the hell's a dry cider? Is that like we had this conversation before. I no, had to explain no to you that it's the difference between sweet and dry, like you would use in terms of white wine. They use it the same way with cider. So it's okay. whether it's so sweet it's or whether not, it's like tart. So it's it's not a non-alcoholic cider. No. And I it mean, also doesn't you, mean it's powdered. <laughs> you could you could interpret it that way. Right. Right. It's a it's dry. There's nothing in it. You ever heard of it like a dry county? Yes, I have. And that means no alcohol. <laughs> well, so, so, so I get the connection. Yeah, dry cider. All right. Two kids, son, 23, college grad, working in financially independent, daughters, 21, will finish college this spring. Her tuition and expenses are covered. I'm 54, y'all. Wife is 52. We plan to retire in about nine years when my wife is eligible for her federal government pension. All right. Let's see. Our gross income is about $350,000. Of this, we save about 40% each year. We max out our TSP and 401k plans and save the rest in taxable brokerage accounts invested in a diversified ETFs. Our annual strategy is to equal, match, qualified, and non-qualified account contributions. Thus, our goal is to save $122,000 at minimum. Okay. I think you're, well... I won't answer yet. Let's go on. 122,000. All right. That's impressive. That's and and Joe, just for your reference, they've got just under 4 million now. Okay. Might as well save another 122,000. You only got 4 mil. It's you got you got to get to 5 or 6 at <laughs> least, yeah. right? Okay. Everything above of the savings excess in the taxable brokerage account, we are in the 24% federal tax bracket. We currently spend about $120,000 a year. We want to spend $150,000 a year. Okay? Uh, wife's federal government pension will be sixty-five thousand. Social Security will be forty thousand each. Okay, so yeah. the fixed income is going to cover your living expenses. Yeah. So I think you should save two hundred and fifty thousand a year, <laughs> or you might start enjoying life a little you bit could, more. You it's know, it's possible. The, yeah, live the big owl life. 
<laughs> I, I do like my life. Currently, our plan is to do Roth conversions in our 60s after we retire to diversify our tax buckets. In the interim, we will build up our cash reserves to pay the taxes. Our logic is that presumably we'll be in a lower tax bracket that we are in now. Of course, we realize that is subject to change. Does our logic make sense or should we consider doing conversions now? For instance, up to the top of the 24% tax bracket after the tax brackets revert to the pre-TC and J Act, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Since we plan to spend more in retirement than we do now. So he spends 149000 today and he wants to spend a whopping 150000 well, in no, retirement. No, he spends one twenty. Oh, so he's right. going up thirty k. It's a, it's a, you know how people, when they get used to being frugal, it's hard to change that? Yeah. 122000 savings a year. That's, That's impressive. All right. I hope I included all the relevant information you need to spit all my questions above. Keep up the great year. Uh, great work. P.S. I am a mid-senior operations and compliance professional in the securities industry. I would love an opportunity to interview for a position at your firm. If and when a position becomes available, and if you would consider remote work, or if you open a branch office location in the D.C. area. Oh, well, there we go. You know, we, we are actually looking for a compliance professional. I did actually forward this email to our compliance department. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. Could be remote, I suppose. I don't know if he can save. I don't know if we're going to pay him. He's saving more than what we're going to pay him. Well, <laughs> correct. If you look at his income, I don't think we can match that. <laughs> I know she's making some too, though. This is not so I a guess, bit senior. This so, would be probably so, mid low. So here's the first comment Junior. that the, the numbers make sense. You didn't ask that, but you, you have. Plenty of resources to retire at the level you want to retire. You can actually spend probably a fair amount more. He's got $2 million in a retirement account that he's never going to touch, and he's 60 years old. Yep. You need to convert to the 24% tax bracket. 100%. I would go all Roth right now in your in your current 401ks and convert to the at the minimum of the top of the 24, right? Yep. But the thing is, so so top of the 24 is about 390,000, but you also get a $25,000 standard deduction. So you can you can really convert to 420, 415, something like that, right? To that level of income. Make sure you 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 factor in any dividends you might have from non-qual. Although I guess I'm not yeah, 1.5 million in brokerage. A ton of brokerage. Yeah. Because he's splitting it equally. I love that that he's doing that. Now he's 52 years old. And or 52 or 54. I'm 54. Wife is 52. Yep. And he worked nine more years. And he's saving $122,000 a year. So he's, sa he's going to save another one and a half million dollars. Right. Into his $4 million pot. And over the next 10 years, that $4 million is going to be $8 million plus another million. He's going to have around $10 million left. I would agree with that. Right. Yep. Hypothetically. Yeah. Based, yeah. I mean, based upon rates return and all that. Right. right. And so that retirement account is going to continue to build and grow and grow. Then he's going to have a nice pension of $65,000 plus another $80,000 in Social Security. He only spends one hundred fifty grand. only, I say, given this, it's, it's pretty low. Right. I would move my contributions to 100% Roth and then start converting to the top of the 24. Yeah, and the 24 bracket, unless they continue it, only goes through 2025. So you got two years. And then we'll see what happens after that. If you look at your almost $4 million, Mike, only 150 is in Roth. So you start beefing that up. 24% is a good bracket. So go for it. Yeah. No, we're not looking to open a branch in D.C. I want to manage my kid. Oh, we got branches now in, what, Sacramento? We have a branch in Denver, Chicago, San Diego, Los Angeles, Orange County. Yeah. What am I missing? Did you get Seattle? Seattle and two. Are we doing Oregon. something in Oregon or something? N Portland, Portland, Oregon. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I can't keep them all straight either. <laughs> we got Duncan from Texas. He writes in. He goes, "Hey, I'm 41 years old. I'm a married man of a nine-year-old son. I love learning about financial planning. I have enjoyed listening to your show over the past year or so. Your shows are very informative and offer valuable details regarding the types of financial decision I find myself facing." I enjoy a nice old fashion, but it's not dry January. Which is when he emailed us. Oh, okay. We're catching up. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we are. Finally. You're in this year. All right. 
so he's blessed to have a great job bringing in $500,000 a year. And my wife is an event planner making $25,000 a year gross. <laughs> I like how he, he doesn't say his 500,000 is gross. Yeah. He goes, yeah, my wife, 25,000 gross. Which also means she's got expenses. So it doesn't quite work out in the pocket. Got it. Our family currently spends $175,000 a year and put the rest in the savings. We have $1.4 million saved in retirement accounts and a $400,000 frozen pension. $1.6 million in after-tax savings. Our goal is for me to find an early retirement. He's eyeing 51. Wow. Yeah, so am I, Duncan. <laughs> good, good for you, Duncan. As my son is entering college. Well, when Not I yours. One, my son will be entering kindergarten. Kindergarten. <laughs> You might have to wait another 12, 13, 14 minutes. Oh, my life. I just love it. <laughs> I expect that we will be earning twenty five dollars to $50,000 a year from my wife's event planning work. We would plan to make up the difference with the earnings from our after-tax savings until we hit 59 and a half. During my bridge period, I would also prioritize minimizing my AGI and try to do some rollover any pre-tax dollars into a Roth IRA, which leads to my question. Yeah. All right, you got all those facts? Got it. Duncan must retire 51-ish, saved a ton of money, makes a lot of money, doesn't spend. Yeah, doesn't spend very much relative to his earnings. Right. Wants to work 10 more years. Right. Got, he's 41? Got, yep, 40, he's, he's 41. Must retire in 10 years. He's yep. saving how much? Well, let's see. He's He's got, he's got he's, about $3.4 million now. He makes $500. He spends one seventy, puts everything into savings. So yeah. he probably spends a, he saves probably a hundred grand a year. At least. Yeah. All right. My question is where to direct my 401k savings over the next 10 years or the one point four million dollars in retirement savings? About half is currently in Roth accounts, either IRA or 401k. My 401k offers options for pre-tax Roth or after tax contributions. I can roll over the after-tax contributions into the mega Roth conversion. I've always prioritized Roth savings whenever I can. But now that I'm earning more, I'm questioning if I should be making all future 401k contributions pre-tax, especially since I plan to keep making Roth IRA contributions and mega Roth conversions in my 401k plan. Currently, my two-thirds of my retirement is Roth accounts with the remainder in pre-tax accounts. I should be able to save 30000 and Roth contributions with another $45,000 going to my pre-tax bucket. My employer matches 7% per year. So he wants to know, what should he do? Yeah. He's so, going to save a ton of money. Should he go Roth, pre-tax, after-tax, do the mega conversions? So he, he it sounds like he, he's already doing a Roth contribution. He's already, he's planning on maxing out the retirement. He's doing a backdoor Roth he already, contribution. Yeah. Right. And he's, and he, he's doing the mega Roth, which right now you can put up to 69 grand. Uh, when you're under 50 in a 401k, that includes your contributions, the company contributions, and then after or yeah, after tax money that you can then convert to a Roth IRA at no charge. So I think the real question is for his contributions to be Roth or after tax. He's already doing after tax. Yes, yes. So what should he do? Should he? I, I know what you're going to say. He makes five hundred thousand dollars. You want him to get the tax deduction? I would, and I know what you're going to say. All Roth. All Roth. Yeah. He's forty years old. Yeah, the reason I say is go ahead and take the tax deduction is the tax tax bracket. You've already got 50-50. You're going to be adding more Roth than regular. By the time you retire 51, you've got like almost 25 years to convert. So that that's what I think. Yeah, no, I, I get that logic, but I don't know what's going to happen with Roth IRAs. I don't know what's going to happen with tax brackets. Sure. This guy's going to retire. He's already said, but again, we're, we're looking at this in a bubble. True. And so this, he's 40 years old and he's already saved how much? Yeah. Millions. He's got 3.4. $3.4 million at 40 years old. Yeah. It's better than you and me by quite a factor. <laughs> Come on. And then he's going to retire at 50. He's saving $100,000 a year. Again, 10 years, $3 million, $6 million. He's going to have $10 million at 50. Right. Do you think he's going to just go off into the sunset? No. His kids are going to go to college, and he's just going to chill? I don't think so. There's no way. He's going to continue to grind, to do something else. He's going to start a business. He's going to make more money. He's a rare breed. Yes. He's a hustler. 
I would go all Rob yeah. because I bet you in 10 years from now, he's going to be making more money. He's going to have a lot more money coming out of his investments, and you're, he's he's going to take the uncertainty of taxes off the table. Yeah, and I get your logic, too. I still would go. I'd get the deduction because of the bracket. He lives in Texas. There's no state tax. True. You're not going to – I mean, it's true either way if he stays there. Uh, anyway, difference of opinion. Either one is fine. You're going to be in great shape. We got Jay-Z from Minnesota, Big Al. Jay-Z, okay. Hey, Joe, Big Al, personal finance fanatic here. But recently started listening to you guys. He's a, a real fanatic. Oh, definitely the funniest finance podcast out there. Well, thank you very much, Jay Z. And among all the podcasts I listen to weekly, YMYW is so far my favorite. Okay. Killing it, it. it may not last, but so far, yeah, so good. Because you're going to listen to three episodes. And like, it's going to be the same, same thing <laughs> over just, and over same. and over. It's like, oh, just, my God. It's just like bleep. rinse and re repeat. Just bleep that. I'm going <laughs> to. I have a quick question about what which accounts. Are, this is like, Andy, you did this again to me. I didn't. I honestly didn't. These yeah. are just in order that they were sent to us. And I swear to you, they're just, yeah. <laughs> the one that you're going to read later that talks about how the content is so similar, it's because this is what you guys are best at. Okay. <laughs> I have a quick question about which account to save. I'm 31 years old, single, 90 years, uh, $90,000 of annual income. Live super frugally. Monthly expenses usually around below $3,000. Wow. Okay. Wow. I just can't find ways to spend money. I do love traveling now, and I've visited 20 Plus countries, but also on a very low budget. So he's staying at youth hostels and yeah, just, getting discount fares. Yep. Good for, good for you, Jay-Z. Yep. Currently with some family help, I have $28,000 in a pre-tax 401A, $51,000 in a Roth 403B, $61,000 in a Roth IRA. He's got an HSA and some money market accounts for emergency and 70000 in a brokerage account. Yeah, fifty percent of this is in money market now. Right. For keeping track, it's about two hundred fifty k. And he's thirty years old. Yep. It's what's a four hundred one a? Four hundred one a is very similar to any type of retirement plan, but he must work for a hospital, nonprofit, maybe a school, maybe something like that, where there's mandatory contributions. Usually, maybe the employer is putting money in, or you have to dedicate a certain they just have certain restrictions on on, on the plan thank you yep. last year i maxed out my roth for, oh c 403b there you have it yep so it's probably a hospital uh roth ira hsa along with my 5.5 percent contribution to my employer 401a with 10 percent matching which is 42 percent savings rate That's wow good if I add in the employer match, it's 52. 52, so. okay. A friend of mine thinks I'm saving too much in retirement accounts and says I should divert money into a brokerage. Their argument is that a 30% savings rate for retirement accounts is more than enough, and apparently my frugal lifestyle won't possibly change. So I don't need that much in retirement accounts that I won't use until 30 years. Who's telling him this? His friend. Got it. Yeah, the friend, friend of his. 30%. Who saves 30% in a retirement account? So it's, I Jay mean, it's, does. <laughs> I wonder what Jay Z's buddy saves. He's like, oh man, you're saving 42%. Yeah. Auto? Well, no. You're, you're showing me up. I'm yeah. saving 4%. <laughs> well, no, this guy must be saving like 41%. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we tell people to try to work up to 20. That would be a great goal. Yeah. He's, he's got that beat. Yep. Their suggestion is that I can still pretend. To have a savings rate of 40 or 50 percent, but for anything above 30, I should put it in index funds in my brokerage account for better liquidity, which means I will max out my Roth IRAs, HSAs, and maybe only 12,000 in the 403B plan and put the remaining 11 and a half into index funds in my brokerage account. What do you think? I understand their point, but I also feel like missing the free Roth opportunities is stupid. In the meantime, <laughs> I also feel like having the liquidity in the brokerage is good because I indeed have an um, imminent, 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 as in pending yeah. very soon. 
purchase. Pending, pending purchase. Yes, got a pending purchase. In about three to five years for our house down payment. Appreciate your spitball as always. I drive a 2020 Mazda 3 Zoom Zoom and love margaritas, but no salt. Remember, no salt. Okay, got it. All right. Just in case you're pouring next time Jay-Z is in town. Oh. Yeah, all right. You know, the, the cool thing is, looks like everything he's doing, retirement, is going into Roth. Right. I would keep doing what you're doing, Jay-Z. He's already got brokerage accounts. He's got cash. He's got about 100000 outside of retirement accounts right now. He does. Yep. Your Roth IRAs <clears throat> that you're putting money into, you always have access, let's say, in an emergency of the contributions if you need to take that. Is that... But is that also true in a 401A no. and 403B? No. So that's the tricky part. He's not he's not putting a Roth IRA or just a 401A. Well, he he's got yeah. a, he's got a Roth IRA. Yep. So does. do Roth IRA. Yep. 403B. I think it's mandatory with the five and a half percent 401A because yep. it gets a ten percent match. Agreed. I would no. I would keep doing what you're doing. Here, here's my only exception. I agree with you, Joe. But depending upon what kind of house you want to buy, make sure you've got enough. To, for a down payment, whatever you might want, have extra cushion, emergency fund, maybe have a little extra money for travel. But once you factor that and just keep doing what you're doing. Because here's the difference. <clears throat> Roth IRAs grow 100% tax free. You'll never, ever pay a dollar in taxes ever on the growth of those unless you have a disqualified distribution. And, and here's another thing to think about, which, which the Roth... Once you let's say you retire before age fifty five, which at your pace I'm guessing might be the case, right? And so, if you've got the the Roth four hundred one four three B four hundred one A whatever, you can roll that to a Roth IRA, correct? So, and if you do that, then you could take distributions from that, and it's always the contributions come out first, which are tax free. So it doesn't matter that you're not fifty nine and a half. Yeah, he could do a seventy two T tax election. He could do all sorts of stuff because he doesn't spend any money, right? Tax diversification works like this, Jay-Z, is that you want money in each of the different pools, pre-tax, Roth, and a brokerage account, because then you can control your taxes long-term in retirement. But I think Jay-Z is like, you know what? I'm putting everything in Roth because I'm going to pay zero tax when I start taking money out, and he's going to have millions. Right, and his Social Security be 100% tax-free mm -hmm. because he'll have no other income. He saves 50% of his income. <laughs> right. I don't know. Yeah. If I had 50% of my income saved today, I would go 100% Roth. And then in whatever, 30 years or 20 years when I retire. Unless unless you want to buy a McMansion. In it's going to be a ton of, Yeah. <laughs> McMansion. I don't even know what that is. Learn how tax diversification and the infamous Roth can help you control your taxes in retirement. Go to the podcast show notes now and download the complete Roth Papers package to understand how Roth accounts work so you can take full advantage of their tax-saving benefits. This bundle of Roth guides is packed with valuable information about Roth contributions and conversions, the backdoor Roth strategy for when you make too much money to contribute directly to a Roth, and the rules for taking money out of your Roth IRA. Plus, you'll learn the differences and the pros and cons of saving in a traditional IRA versus a Roth IRA versus a Roth 401k and much more. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your favorite podcast app, go to the show notes and download the complete Roth Papers package. Don't forget to share the show and the resources with your friends. We got Ben from San Francisco writes in. He goes, hello there. Thanks for the fantastic show. For information, your information is extremely valuable. Well, thank you, Ben. I drive a 2017 Honda Civic. I don't drink, but I'm addicted to steak and salmon from the Troggy Grill. I think it's Traeger. Traeger. <laughs> I have a question about rule of 55 for 401k plans. My friend is forced to leave her job this year. Her employer has given her an exit package and laying her off. She's currently 54. She doesn't turn 55 until 2025. Her husband is going to keep working. He has a very large retirement balance. They have enough cash reserves to replace her lost income until 2025. She doesn't want to go back to work, and she wants to start to take distributions out of her 401k plan starting in 2025 to replace her lost income. She will, of course, be subject to the 10% penalty if she starts taking the distributions out of the 401k in 2025. Her strategy would be to try to get access to her 401k dollars without paying a penalty. 
my question is this. Let's say she takes a part-time job with a new employer in 2025 that offers a 401k. Let's say that she rolls her current 401k balance to her new employer's plan in 2025. If she keeps those dollars in the new 401k for a few months and then retires from that new employer, can she then start to take the dollars out of the new employer plan without a penalty since she's 55? Once you answer that question, I have a follow-up question. Okay, let's answer that question. Yeah, we'll start there. All right, Ben. So he's looking after his girl. She's getting laid off. She's 54. Right. A little layoff. Here's a little severance package. Thanks for your time. Sure. But the rule of 55 is this, which most people I don't think understand. I think very few people understand. If you separate from service from your employer at age 55, yeah. there is no 10% penalty. Yeah. In other words, you're 55, you separate from service from your current employer only, not your other 401ks, current employer only, then you can take monies out of that. And of course, you'll pay taxes on it because you got a tax deduction, but you won't pay the 10% penalty. If you roll it into an IRA, IRAs are 59 and a half, no matter what. 401ks are 55. So it's like, okay, well, man, she's going to turn 55 soon. He's like, well, how does she get money? She wants to replace her income. Right. She's going to go get a job. Yeah, part-time job with a 401k. That's or, the only... Or, only <laughs> or how about how about set up your own little business set and set up a solo 401k? I don't think that works. We've done it. <laughs> at, at rule 55 and a solo 401k? Yeah. Since they're like... Well, anyway... Her only <laughs> her only requirement is that it needs to have a 401k plan. Right. Because she's going to roll her 401k into that 401k. Then she's going to turn 55. Then she's going to separate from service. Yeah, she'll retire from that new part-time job. That she's worked for four months, right. rolled her 401k in, <laughs> and she's going to say, see you later. Right. I'm out. Right. And then now that gives her the ability to take money out of the 401k plan and avoid the 10% penalty. Right. Do you agree with that? I do. Do you? Do you think that's worth the hassle? <laughs> I mean, what is she going to do? Go maybe work at a liquor store that has a 401k plan it, for like three days? It depends what the dollars are and how much, we, which we don't so know. You got to go. You got to interview. You got to, right? And then you get the job. And then you're, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I would do all of that. Just, could you imagine just, Using your employer for their 401k. <laughs> I'm sure people do it. Anyway, let's answer the question. Yes, it works. Would should you? I guess that's the question you're asking. You're, you're saying you're saying you wouldn't. Well, I, I, her husband has a big ass retirement account. He said, right? Stick just borrow take money from that account. Yeah, I mean, there's different ways. You to could take a seventy two tax election. Could. You'd have to roll that 401k to an IRA and take the 72T. You could do that. You could you you could do this. You could get another job and then retire at 55 or, at 55 or later, right? Doesn't have to be 55. And then you can pull money out without penalty. So you have basically four and a half years between 55 and 59 and a half where you pull money out without the 10% penalty uh, if you do this. Sure. I mean, I have a follow-up question. She currently has an IRA account with pre-tax dollars. Can she also roll that IRA into the account into the new employer next year and then get access to those dollars penalty free as well? 72T distribution is not a good fit for her as it wouldn't generate enough cash flow to meet her needs. Got it. But what, what, Ben's running the 72T tax election calculation? <laughs> well, it sounds like Ben's an advisor. It sounds like yes. <laughs> and his friend is... His this client, is quiet. Yes. right, right, and she's asking the question. He's like, "Yeah, let me do a little research." Yeah, let, let me let me yeah, talk let to me, the yeah YMYW. <laughs> let me hit up the boys so, in San Diego. So the answer to that question is yes. You can roll the IRA into the new four hundred one k, which is actually a great strategy because if there's any post tax dollars in there, that can be that can be a roll that can be converted to a Roth IRA without any uh, tax. Very good. Ben, hopefully that helps. If you have more questions for your clients, you know where to go. <laughs> now we got a, another one star. Is thought, it one star? I thought it was three star. It's well, three star, and, but he loves it when they're one star. So he, he's downgrading it for us. Yes. <laughs> 
it's not five it's one right it, usually no, it's, it's not first you're last usually it's one or the other right, right? so this yeah. is a three we don't get too many threes no who who do it it's like you with a three it's like you're average <laughs> <laughs> you know it's all right i don't i'm not i'm not loving it but it's all right yeah entertaining show with some useful input into retirement strategy. All right. That sounds like a five. So it's at least a five. <laughs> Understandably, the spitballs are limited in detail and scope that they can provide. So suggestions can come across as repetitive after a few episodes. You yeah, trust it. me. That's why I've never listened to this. <laughs> You've listened to one, you listen to them all. Here's We do answer the questions that are presented. And they're, they are they do tend to be somewhat similar. The feedback provided also was overly conservative at times. Oh, I, I'm okay with that comment. <laughs> I would rather be talking conservative than not. When it, when it comes to finances, because I, I don't want to like like make you think you're fine when you're not quite so good. Failing to consider all guaranteed income or diminished spending as you age when setting appropriate target withdrawal rates. Well, guaranteed so, income. So, so what is I, I, that an annuity of I, some sort or Yeah, I mean, I think we do pensions, we do social security. If there aren't most people that write in don't have annuities, so it doesn't come up very often. But as as far as spending less, yeah, that can be, but the reason we don't think about that I fully totally agree with this guy or gal. Yeah. Well, I would say this. I would say there are many cases where spending goes up as you age, because you've got to go to assisted living or a nursing home or something like that. So again, being conservative, we just try to factor that in. One of two things happens here, because <clears throat> this person, Wembley, Wembley, Wemby, 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 Wemby. Wemby. Okay. Wemby. Okay. I agree, because here's what happens. I fumble around and try to read these questions. <laughs> And it takes me a while to get through the questions. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Andy goes, well, you've got one minute. <laughs> and so then we are, all right, let's quickly do this. Okay. Yeah. 4% looks good. Okay. All right. Yeah, next question. <laughs> so that's terrible <laughs> because we got to get into a lot more detail. And he's right because some people, it's like, hey, a 7%, 8% burn rate might be just fine because you're going to spend less or you don't. Right, but then there's sequence of return risk. You, we don't really know what's your fixed income. We don't know what the markets are going to do. We don't know life expectancy. True. You know, some people are like, "Well, why do you always say seventy for Social Security? I want to take it right now because I want to party." And I live in the villages, <laughs> in Florida. <laughs> it's like, all right, well, take it at sixty-two. We don't care. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's basically, when we when people ask, "Am I okay?" We're we're kind of this is it is very conservative it's, and it's way back of the envelope. It's it it's just based upon a quick back of the envelope. This is this is not gospel. This is just yeah. You look like you probably be pretty good, or you or you look like you you look like you're fantastic, or I don't know. It's a little close, or no, I don't think you're ready. All right. I, I mean that's so that, we're we're gonna switch this thing up. We're gonna <laughs> spend a little bit more time. We'll talk a little bit more details. We'll get into some more complex strategies. I, I like that. And we'll just share. We'll just, we need. We need different. Show off or knowledge, we need. You know? We need different questions. Like we need someone to say, you know, I got a million dollars of company stock think? in my four hundred one k, and and the cost basis. Is what like, do you think of private credit? <laughs> okay. I, well, now I can yeah. go on a rant on that. Ooh. Yeah. How about alternative investments? Yeah, I got a is that private equity fund. Part of a portfolio. Should, should we put that in? Have you ever heard of liquid alternatives? <laughs> Or so you'd different. say our show is a three out of five stars right now, too, right? I would say it's probably a, a high one and a half. <laughs> oh, wow. If okay. I were to rate our show, I'd give it a good one. That's why you can't listen to it. It's, well, it's, <laughs> it's no... Uh, well, I would disagree with you. I would say most of our listeners give us five stars, and most are very complimentary. All right. Yeah, no, I agree. You're Mr. Positive. <laughs> my glass is always half full. My, my glass is like 90% full all the time. My glass is always full, even if it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> even there's 10% in, it's uh, full. All right. Thank you all for everything. We got to get the hell out of here. The show's called Your Money or Wealth, and we'll see you next time.
Ginger versus Marianne, Patrick Swayze, Dry January, Frugally, The Cost of Living in Minnesota, and Visiting the Traeger Grill in the D-Rails, so stick around. This show wouldn't be a show without you. And when you tell your friends about YMYW or leave your honest reviews and ratings for Your Money, Your Wealth and Apple Podcasts and all the other apps that accept them, you help us grow the show, and we appreciate you. So thank you. Your Money, Your Wealth is presented by Pure Financial Advisors. A retirement spitball from Join Big Al is a good start starting point, but a deep dive into your finances will really help you optimize your money, your wealth, and your retirement. Schedule a free assessment with the experienced financial professionals on Joe and Big Al's team at Pure. You can meet in person at any of Pure's offices around the country or online via Zoom from anywhere in the world. Get a retirement plan that's fully customized for your risk tolerance, your financial needs, and your goals. To get started, click the free financial assessment banner in the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com or call 888-994-6257. Pure Financial Advisors is a registered investment advisor. This show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full and informed investment decision. Are you a Ginger or Marianne kind of guy? I, I was Marianne. Marianne. How about you? Yeah, I think I was a Marianne kind of guy yeah. myself. I, I think most people I ask were Marianne guys. Yeah. Thurston Howell the third. Yeah. No? Where's Gilligan? <laughs> well, this is Skipper and Ginger. Got it. Um, you think, I don't think Ginger would have went for the Skipper. Uh, well, and I don't think she would have gone for Gilligan either. Yeah, I think the professor. Yeah, that was, he had the best right, chance. Didn't Ginger and like the professor? They, they sort of they, were they, chummy. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe they got some coconut so. milk, milk together at some point. <laughs> Whatever that means, I'll right. uh, we'll just imagine. Relevant information. Do you know Patrick Swayze used to smoke 60 cigarettes a day? 60? 60. Okay. That's pretty impressive. See, yeah. Cigarettes. Are yeah. Good. Patrick Swayze. He was in great shape. I know. Fantastic shape. How'd he die? I don't know. Well, it was cancer, I think, right? Was it I believe it was. Yep. Yeah. That would probably be a pretty good contributor. 60 smokes. A day. How many packs is that? How many packs are in a. How many smokes? I don't, I don't smoke. I don't know. He died of pancreatic cancer. So. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sure you the smoking didn't help it. Oh. Probably. Well, whatever. Sorry. RIP. Relevant information, and you know how I knew that. You gotta watch or listen to the rewatchables. I'm going on way too many tangents. <laughs> Relevant Long derails. I am. I try to do dry January. How'd that work out? Did not work out very well. <laughs> Did you break that one on New Year's Eve? Well, that's December, isn't it? Oh, yeah, true. Did you break that one on New Year's Day? No, I don't think so. Wow. But no, dry January doesn't really start until like after. Like that, that after you get back, back to work yeah back to work right? <laughs> so you, you might have that couple of days and so let's say you, you go back to work on the fourth yeah that's when it starts got it okay got that's it. what you tell yourself that's what i'm gonna yeah next year so my yeah. my sweet annie sometimes gives up wine for lent oh, okay and i'm very proud of her although she's never actually made the entire period but she's done it for a couple of weeks at least wow she just goes to straight vodka then yes it's beer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Margaritas. Got it. All right. Frugally. Is that how you say that? Frugally, yes. Yeah, Frugally. You got it. It just kind of sounded it did, it did sound weird the way you said it. <laughs> Frugally. <laughs> Still sounds weird. <laughs> Frugally? Or frugally. That sounds like some sort of stuffed animal. A frugly. <laughs> A frugally. <laughs> now it's, I'm screwed up with that word. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know how you're supposed to pronounce it. He's very frugal. Yes. That's easier to say. In Minnesota, can you actually like rent a place or own a place for less than three thousand dollars? That's crazy. Oh, Guys, I'm moving to Minnesota. No. Well, you got to move to like uh, Iron Range or something. Way up north. Way up. Iron ore. Or <laughs> Iron Range. Is that a thing? Huh? Okay. Yeah. All right. There's a little town called Ore now. Really good at hockey. Cold as hell. Okay, got it. Cheap rent, probably. I would imagine. Yeah. I don't know. Just guessing. Yeah. Don't you? Just know? Keep, yeah. <laughs> you ever been to the Traeger Grill, Big Al? Have not. I assume that's in San Francisco. Because that's. I assume in. that it's actually a type of grill that he uses it to cook on. Yes, oh. it's an original wood pellet grill. 
Okay, then, <laughs> no, I don't even know what that is. Then. I'm gonna steal one. <laughs>